you have an unfull life if you are not married. Mm. Your, you know, your, your life is still waiting to begin. You know, platonic relationships and the healing that they can sometimes come with, you know, are secondary to the healing that can come from a romantic relationship. Mm. Hello, 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 and welcome to yet another episode of the Conversation Capital. Today is the Get Ready With Me episode where we're going to be going through some of your questions, comments, and things like that, and just engaging with you on the content we've already put out. And so if you'd like to be one of those people, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Today, though, as always, it is the voice of reason, Obonga Bwerta. Hi, girl. How are you hey. doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I am awesome. Thank you. And it is your host, Ursula Mariani. And maybe let's get into the first question. Yes. This question is, um, this comment, not question, is mm-hmm. one to do with quite an, ep- an an old episode of ours. You, in fact, still had it right? That's Ooh. how old the, the episode is. Yeah, but we love it when people go back, right? Mm. So, um, this person, it's not a name per se, so I'll just say this person. Um, it's on the episode, yeah, the plight of being a chubby black woman in South Africa. Mm. Um, mm. This good. person says, yes. Yeah. This person says, parents allowing their kids to be fat or mm. overweight at a young age and letting it get worse as time goes on is a failure on their part then again they don't preach nor do they practice living a healthy lifestyle we only see this on social media and on tv but as an adult the only person to blame for you not having a good health is yourself you choose what to eat when and how much to eat you choose when or how often you exercise if you do Be accountable for the choices you make as an adult. It is your responsibility to maintain good health mentally, emotionally, and physically. It's your responsibility to educate yourself on the benefits of living a healthy lifestyle. So on the part of kids, I can get that to some extent. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to the adults, for me, it's the individual relating being on the chubbier side with being unhealthy. And the first example I can think of, and I wonder what you're going to say, is Mm. Lizzo. Lizzo is a very active artist. Mm. She's very, I mean, we're always shocked at how much she has breath control Mm. while dancing Mm. and is on the chubbier side, Mm. you know? So I don't think someone like Lizzo on, on, on maybe in the doctor's office would be said to be when you look at her activity and you know, how much she's able to do, mm-hmm. would they be said to be unhealthy? Or are there people who are genuinely bigger on the bigger side despite what they, they do? And you're a science person, so mm. I'm, I'm excited to hear your, your response to this mm. or what you think. I don't, do know you think a, I don't think I've got a scientific response for it, but <laughs> they, they are certain, they are you know standards with regards to how health is calculated. So it's your mm. hip to waist ratio, it's your BMIs and things mm. like that, which do have a large part to do with weight. Right and weight distribution, how your your fat is distributed, so there's that element to it that does circulate around being. But then for me, the part that isn't taken into consideration with comments like that is just somebody's like your genetics, you know, around being generally uh, inclined to being a tankier person. And, and somebody can, you can see it. You go to funerals where you know cankles, you know these are. Uh, Cankles, I don't know what else to call these, like really big, chunky ankle. Okay. Where it runs in the whole family. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you can see like a body type of fat distribution in the genetics Yay. of somebody's body, be it a big booty and a small Yay. waist, the mom, the grand, and you know, so there are things like that are, uh, there's a genetic predisposition to a type of figure and body that's mm. not being taken into consideration. And so when I saw the comment, the first thing I thought genuinely, and I still think it now, is just the insensitivity around people that you can see the whole family's chunky you can see the predisposition to being but you make it seem like it's and don't get me wrong you can work out you can um go for up for healthier options my mom always says my mom is a gym fanatic right and she's a nurse so she understands why this is so important why eating healthy but my mom always says the way i'm still a chunky lady you would swear you know like i don't eat the healthiest and, and you know and and even when it came to the child comment, I remember my mom putting me and my brother on diets mm. because she could see, unfortunately, my kids got these genes that are similar to mine, you know. And any other person in that era, especially during that time, would have said, I, this lady, she should leave the kids alone. But my mom's a nurse. And my mom's like, I need to get my kids, you know, as healthy as possible. Mm. You know, and I, I respect, like, the efforts my mom was putting in. She put the whole house on brown rice. 
vegetables we always had these super balanced diets but i've never been skinny yeah i've never been a skinny kid you and know it, this is despite your efforts yes. even as an adult yes even as Sometimes. an adult anybody that's got me on my personal you see that i go boxing every four times a week you know but i'm not a skinny person mm. and it's so insensitive to be like you need to do better. I remember Nonku's mom, so specifically Chunky Girl episode, one day saying, um, she, she, it's a Chunky family. Nonku even speaks about being a Chunky family yes. on the episode. And she says, you know, people sometimes will talk to me as if when my kid comes in and says I'm thirsty, I'm like, so I'm a or no. <laughs> <laughs> We always laugh and joke about yes. it. But it, it just points towards, you have no idea the struggle of dealing with, and you can tell when it's a skinny person commenting. Yeah. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, there is those miracle stories where people really obsess and they work really hard for their But weight. that's the thing, they obsess. Yes. And, and work really it's hard. It's beautiful. And we never speak about the skinny person who's just predisposed. The whole family skinny. Yes. Yes. So whatever they eat, if Ibila will yes. hear the fact that you're waja, yeah, but we'll never yes. address that the person. fast metabolisms that uh-huh. they're born with, and uh-huh. lucky you, it's great. Mm. Don't be insensitive. You have no idea, mm. you know. And don't get me wrong, there's a balance to it. I don't want anybody to stand here and say Ursula saying people shouldn't get fit and healthy. There yes. is a balance to it. There are people that aren't trying hard. They aren't mm. working for mm. their bodies. Mm. You can see what you can achieve. You're not achieving because you're not putting in the discipline. But there is the fact that my effort and a naturally skinny girl's effort is not the same. Yes. You know, I'll go to boxing four times a week. The girl that comes once a month, when I six pack, eh? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know yes. there is a natural my, predisposition that you have. That's what I find problematic to mm. say immediately when you see someone on the chunkier side, immediately unhealthy. Unhealthy. What's unhealthy happening? habits. Yes. Unhealthy this. Yes. You know? And true, the truth is, you you do see sometimes often where it correlates yes you know yes where it correlates and you're like mm, you could change this you but could it, change that but that can't be your immediate assumption yes and you see a ca- yes you have no idea what, or where that person actually even comes from yes to where they are now yeah. maybe the chunky that you're seeing now is a it's smaller nothing. chunky than what they like just don't be they don't assume chunky equals unhealthy yes. you don't know you have no idea somebody's journey i agree i i hated that comment and i hated it as a chunky girl i was just like uh-uh no i did not realize <laughs> especially because i remember being on diets as a kid my mom would put us on soup diets and she really worked hard being a health person knowing that i need to you know Sorry, guys, I just became very passionate about this topic. Because we like, do not mind I it at all. I saw it and I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, yeah. And then on the topic, yeah, it was a get ready with me episode is are we too conscious of racial dynamics? Mm. And then Camille JR says, um, in quotation marks, I don't think I'm racist after saying the most racist stuff ever <laughs> she didn't say stuff by the way <laughs> i don't know if kishi or kihi or kelho or um and if i'm to quote what was the statement again i said i scanned the room yes uh i don't i actually don't mind um i don't mind uh somebody saying hey Ursh, have you seen this perspective to something because all that left me with was going back to go listen to my statement again. And I still didn't see the racism Mm-mm, in it. There's no racism. So, um, and like I'm saying, no problem. Eh? If you feel that way, it's a teaching opportunity. It is a conversation capital. Bong and I are not claiming to like, you know, be correct all the time. Feel free to say, have you thought of this perspective? What makes us racist? Mm. Because as far as I know, black people can't be racist. I don't have the capacity <laughs> to oppress I don't have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's another <laughs> argument. I know it's another even bigger argument. Fine, fine. And teaching moment. If you're saying no, Ursh, see it this way, or this is how I see it. Let's let's engage. But when you just throw out nasty comments, and then where do we go from there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then why are South Africans reluctant to travel with Kizo? Mm. Um, Kizo, Miss N says, Kizo, thank you. She reignited that travel and work abroad for me all over again. I might just go for it. Been toying with the idea, but now I might follow it through. If you don't mind, please plug me with your email, Eddie. I would like to get in touch. I hope I'm not being too forward. Promise business talk. <laughs> yeah, so this is the person just commenting on... <laughs> I didn't see it, so I actually... Are they asking for TCC's email or Kito's no, email? No, Kito's email. Oh, Kito's email. Um, so if Kito's comfortable, um, 
it will share the email however i have to say there's a lot of resources online about living abroad as a south african twitter is one of platform where there are a lot of resources about living abroad. even facebook there's a whole groups that you can find about going no matter abroad. what it keeps us finding her husband and now i'm a cock block Ah, get it just in case. Oh, oh my god. Some contact at DM Kito mo. DM on Instagram. Kito Rantau, please. If if <laughs> if if Kito doesn't respond, <laughs> then there's yeah. a lot of Facebook, Twitter, yeah, yeah. and just generally online resources, even on YouTube. I love TikTok lately. Yes. Oh, Man, TikTok with as information. Well. Yeah. When you travel and you just like things to do wherever, like oh my gosh. Yeah. Even the things to do, restaurants to go to in Johannesburg. In Johannesburg, crazy places where you you'd never, never know. I mean, I love TikTok lately. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And then, um, on the episode, yeah, healthy masculinity, tears, kisses, and all with Mervin. Mm-hmm. Step up, e tutor says. This is such an important conversation. Thank you so much. This channel always gives me a fresh perspective. Would you please recommend a book on redefining positive masculine or feminine energy or a state of learning to reclaim your fem- my feminine side? Mm. I realize that as a woman, I am always fighting and living in a state of negative masculinity due to previous toxic co- corporate or relationships with exes, etc. This is Lerato Mutupeng. Hmm, interesting. Firstly, the book. Mm. I don't have any recommendations, but we can ask Mervyn. I think she was speaking specifically to ne? Mervyn. Yeah. To Mervyn. Yeah. So we'll definitely um, speak to Mervyn, and Mervyn can give us a recommendation. Mm-hmm. However, what I found interesting is that, okay, I realized that as a woman, I am always fighting and living in a state of negative masculinity due to pre- previous toxic co- corporate or relationships with exes and etc. So what is she saying? She's struggling with... I am living with... in a state of <laughs> negative I wish they could see your face. <laughs> like she's so passionate in a state. <laughs> yeah, so I think... Yeah, because yeah. I, I, I'm wondering, is she saying she's being a negative masculine energy or she's every man that comes through she's or, fighting them as if no i actually i don't know i think she was saying that or you can clarify mm. i think she was saying that she's constantly being um uh, living a, a victim of toxic masculinity yes. i think that's what she was saying yes. which we all are the society we live in but that's why we're trying to have these conversations mm. now but like I, that's what that's what i took away from the comment that she's saying we're constantly being and especially the part of at work you know it's it's cons- it's the thing you always oh, have yes. to manage actually this your 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 breaking it down makes sense mm-hmm. because she's asking what books can she read yeah. in order to educate herself yeah on the opposite yeah and so it's so that interesting that it's a woman that wants to educate themselves instead of the men that are actually you know that need to educate themselves mm. um well about a piece of that to educate themselves i guess it's a societal thing because even women are the gatekeepers of toxic masculinity, masculinity in yes. themselves <laughs> yeah so 100 percent. yeah yeah it's a bit of, yeah it's a, it's a tricky one we've actually had we this all conversation because it's like okay masculinity is bad until it is, mm. it's in daughter mass yes then masculinity oh. starts that oh. masculinity starts being favorable yes. to yes yes and many times i mean we spoke about it the one time um with um but it was actually an off-air comment where uh, that guest that we had that spoke about the abusers. Yes. Uh, I've forgotten. Vambili. Danny Vambili. Danny Vambili's wife off-air then said, when you're a man, nobody cares about how you feel. It's get to work. Whereas when you're a woman, you can take a moment to. Perfect example would be, we've said it before, leave a funeral. Mm. A woman sit down on the mattress and mourn. Have this moment. In daughter, yo, come on, raga coffee. You can have a whole no, 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 no. You know, they, they've got a list of things to do. Have a moment, mourn. Mm. It's not there for men, you know. So, small things like that. And uh, ever since she said that, I see it. I see it. like men don't have the privilege to outwardly time out. I That's need to true. take a breath. It's fix the situation, sir. Yeah. And then, um, the bitterness of being a single parent with Kubeka is great conversation i am a single parent lately i've been feeling so down overwhelmed with the responsibilities i do love my child but yes i could if i could do things differently i would have waited to have a child love your podcast 
thank you so much for that mm. yeah i think there's even a thing to say somebody's experience yeah. yeah and then um and then nomko c says um given uh, this is on the episode we did on being a new parent he says, given you need to host a real men's conference, every guy deserves a gentle brother like you. Mm. Um, I love that um, it, given would be giving a men's conference of being, a, you know, a, a present father. Mm. <laughs> no, given is shame. Ah, but we've given you your flowers. Sir. Kiss star. Man. Kiss star. Ikaro kama Kenya school, look how fail. All of them. Mm. Even in just like being a partner, he's always talking about the romantic gestures and <laughs> He's so concerned with loving in his fact, partner. In fact, now we're going to put it here. And mm. this is going to give him more pressure to do it. Mm. He was saying he needs to do a podcast for gentlemen. To be like, mm. this is what to do in this instance. Yes. This is what to do in this. You know? Yeah, given does need to do that. Now you have pressure given. I put it on, on, a, on a, a, yeah. a, a public space. Orange, if you want your person to be more romantic and thoughtful, move in and back even. Once we, once we get a paid editor. <laughs> a paid editor, as you see. So he wants the money, guys, huh? You want your man to be romantic, give him the money. <laughs> yeah. And then, oh, books by Tumelo Muleleki says, the wonderful thing is that, oh, this is on the topic, yeah, building a business in a space where you're a minority as a black woman. So, um, books by Dumelo Moleleki says, The wonderful thing is that, unlike our past, which has been subject to rewriting, and for which we have no way of authenticating, some of the voices that were or are said to have belonged to our forebearers. These will be archived for future generations to hear our experiences from out of our own mouths about how we are sought to build an ecosystem that would serve them and within where they would be able to plug themselves and thrive. Thank you, Sponga. Thank you, Ursula and Spongajala, for these conversations. Billy Bailey. I love that mm. because we always have conversations. No man, not always have conversations, but yes, we refer to history and we're not too sure. But now with podcasts like ours and many others, we are certain these things are coming out of the mouths of people. Yeah, to be honest, I've also been like, um, I've been opened up to the revelation of digital archives, Mm. you know, and that's why I actually share more, not necessarily only for the power of sharing, but like it's that three, four, five generations from now. You know, but then you watch episodes like, uh, or not episodes, you watch programs like Black Mirror, uh, and then you see how even digital in the future could digital things could be manipulated, and you don't know if actually what you're putting out into the oh world my God. will arrive as is. You get what I'm saying? Oh my God. Like how now the argument like, is whether our history books have been rewritten, yay. you know, or what's been deleted, what's been so what if that's the future argument? You know, what will the digital security be then? So, but I but I am passionate about like taking a lot more videos, taking a lot more pictures mm. and, you know, having digital archives of things, if, whether it comes out like that in the future or it will be manipulated in the future. Mm. I don't know what the technology will be then, but for now, this is me trying to preserve. I always look at how realistic the pictures come up and you find out it's an AI. What? Oh what? yeah. It's scary. Kids at a conference. It was so cute. <laughs> it almost looked real. Yeah. And I'm like, it's it's scary. it's scary. It's scary what they can do with AI. Like, <gasps> oh, I don't know. Is it is it called AI? I don't know what it's called. Yeah, it's AI. But from what I've seen. Hey, those people, they can put a face on to, anybody's face on anybody. And they're realistically, not like Photoshop. Yes. What's a Photoshop we used I to agree. be able to? Ah. Uh, hey, this is fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, no, it's wild. It's wild. And then on the episode with Jackie, um, on the unspoken impact of lesser culture on men and women, um monica says having a blesser is selling your soul to the devil giving in then expecting in uh, return especially material things Mm, for me it's the part where it's being masked as though it's not prostitution Hmm? do you get what i'm saying it's what like the part where it's being given a higher standard as though it's not prostitution that's my only comment on it. Like, yes. if you're going to do it, own it. Yes. It's prostitution. Yes. Whether it's been given in the form of a bag or... But if you're doing it solely for those things, you are engaging in a business interaction. It's a, tra- transaction. It's a transaction. It's, it's transaction. not love. Yeah. That's my only thing. It's like... Especially both parties know what's yes, happening. Yeah, it's like, don't think it's like... 
fancy. Or bedding. Or bedding. Yeah, that's my only thing. It's like, it's the same thing. You're just not in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, this so lonely. The devil, I can see you. 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 So, devil, right? But yeah, I liked what you're saying. Um, on the hurt of lo- losing friends, um, with Asbo, um, Mamo says, I broke up with my best friend and it hurt more than losing a boyfriend. I felt so alone without her and there are times where I look at our pictures and videos and genuinely miss her. But I am glad I had her in my life and wish her well. No, absolutely. Friendship breakup. Yeah, I even watched another YouTuber this week saying, men haven't hurt me the way my friends have mm. like forget about what men have done in my life like my friends have broken me and i think it's just that you just it's so easy to let this person into such a deeply vulnerable place because we're not warned but i wonder like i'm listening to that and you're absolutely right however i wonder is this hurt coming from that thing was generally that bad or do we hold our friends to a higher standard that, than we ooh, do men ooh. you know that that was beautiful for me. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes these are human beings. Yeah. Humans are humans, guys. Like, especially how okay, um women haven't broken my heart to that extent. Mm-hmm. For me, it signals mm, maybe you held them to a much higher, higher standard, standard. Which is okay because, I mean, they're friends, but we don't hold men to such yes, standards. because everywhere you look, Kim Jolo Wanyi is Jolo, but nobody says friendship. And then no one says, I'm never going back there. How many times have people taken back oh, exes? Yes. And oh, yes, even in the, the the standard of forgiveness that we have hey, hey, for romantic for yes, relationships yes, versus. Yes. Uh, even though you, I like yeah. what you're saying, romantic relationships, mm, it's not just limited yes, to men and women. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, there's a standard of like you're willing to take back and forgive, but you offer that same sort of leniency to you. But your friend also doesn't apologize like that. Huh? Uh, men apologize. Hey. <laughs> 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 Men apologize, but don't make as if they beg. Yes, okay. Don't make as okay. if you okay. don't blow hey, more. Hey. Please. Yeah, it keep I was like, Lisa. <laughs> 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 okay, like I said, okay, <laughs> send you flowers or something. Kapo, I've done some deep reflection. <laughs> There's something missing from me. Oh, man. Okay, 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 Bonga, okay. <laughs> so we must really interrogate how much we judge our friends. Yeah. And okay. and how much grace we give them. Mm. And this is why mm. friends, some friends are very um what is this very intentional about being very strict to their friends you know how as friends when we get we females when we get into relationships sometimes we forget we have friends mm. and that's how sometimes a lot of women have gotten very strict about the fact that if you're going to neglect this relationship mm. because you have a partner now mm. then you can't come in, come back to me in mm. the same way mm. you know how like, i'm a gone girl and you're yes. gone 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 you forget yes. the labor that your friendships de- de- deserve Ooh. and so forth mm. that's why there's a lot of women now who are very strict on the fact that you need to strike a balance. Yes. You can't come to me when that fails. Yes. As if I'm always there waiting yes. for you. Lena, I matter. Ooh, I've never held any friend to a standard where it's like, you still need to focus on me even though you're going through. But I see how it, it does suck mm. when they just like forget about you. Mm. And it's like, how balance in yes. I still need you I think the most life. important thing is balance. I think mm. we're adults, we understand there'll be a bit of uh, we won't be the same. We won't mm. chat up until this and this. We won't. I love this conversation. It's actually. it's it's different. The, the, like any d- mm. dynamic. I have a baby now. My friendship dynamics are very different. Mm-mm. You know. Yeah. And so a relationship, a romantic relationship, is definitely going to do that. Mm. But there needs to be a balance. But don't you think it goes back to that thing where so we live in a society society that um, puts romantic relationships on a on a pedestal, right? And that's why you you have an unfull life. If you are not married, mm-hmm. your you know your your life is still waiting to begin. You know, platonic relationships and the healing that they can sometimes come with, you know, are secondary to the healing that can come from a romantic relationship. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. Or the celebration that can come. We don't have anniversaries for friendship day. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? And like even even in 
the concept of buying a house with a friend yeah. it's not there because even though your friendship is probably what's more likely to last in the era that we yes. live in now compared to marriages yes. do you get what i'm saying and like, i'm also thinking platonic, about yeah friendship. and i'm also thinking about the role of friends mm-hmm. a lot of the times not to compare them but they are bigger than this one person yeah you know i i yes. feel like we we actually do not give friendships the credit they that they deserve absolutely because when you i think about the investments my friends mm. my i mean my cousins are my friends but mm. those individuals mm. making my life mm. is way bigger than yes. the investment one person yes can do. i actually was speaking to a 15 year old girl who was struggling like uh, suicidal and struggling with depression and then a very close friend and their mom happened to move in next door mm. And, and I couldn't believe the words that came out of this little girl's mouth, you know, because they're in this phase of like boys and they're so, and then, and and then I said, Oh, how, how are things going? Cause I know that you were struggling a lot with this element of your life and whatever. And she said to me, my life is so much better since my uh, best friend moved next door. Mm-hmm. And she even said, like, I have an outlet mm-hmm. when I'm upset. I can just go chat with her. Unlike before, nobody was listening to me because I'm 15. Mm. I feel like I'm heard by someone. And I just saw the role of like friendship. friendship. Even at that age, there's two 15-year-olds, but they're counseling. You know, you could say they're giving yes. each other stupid advice, but they just somebody to sit and listen and say, ask you, mm. That person has gotten her out of a place where she's, you know, trying to commit suicide. And, they, and I, I was taken aback. I was just like, wow, friendship is heavier than we think no it you know it, it holds more weight than we give it credit for yes mm. yes mm. yes yes 100 percent. and then um utembek uh, says living in the op- episode you're living with dyslexia this topic is so important and i think parents need to be informed with different disabilities sometimes schools are accommodating but at home is a problem people who are differently who definitely need a support circle. Mm. It goes back to that conversation we had around support structures as in everybody knowing what is up. Yes. It makes a huge difference. Unlike one teacher yes. who understands dyslexia, yes. but at home they don't. Yeah. The community around you doesn't. It goes back to that whole expanding what it is to say we're bringing awareness to something. Like... um i actually recently read a post by a dad who spoke about having a child with down syndrome mm. and he was like it's a lonely road mm, the yeah. stairs from parents mm. from the, the, the other kids teasing his child mm. um and he was also like but in the same breath he was speaking about the importance of um like this person says community because he was taking the child was for the first time going to a sc- uh, grade one Mm. And then this was a, uh, a special ed school, mm-hmm. you know. So for the first time, he felt seen. There were parents mm. with kids with special needs just like him, having the same struggles just like Any him. Any struggle when you meet people that are in the same situation, you know, it makes such a big difference. Because mm. it's like, and they get you. Mm. One sentence and they get it like the way somebody else doesn't. You get mm. what I'm saying? Whether Absolutely. it could be, sometimes let's say somebody close to you is in prison. Right, and you can try to share the struggle of supporting a loved one who's in prison with somebody that doesn't really know. And the yeah. kid will ask, but the moment you say it to somebody who's who knows that experience, their advice, the terminology, their feelings, oh how they God. relate to you. Ushla. Yes, oh. <laughs> I can think of so many yes. things that, yes. that that speak to this. I think mm. about this um, with giving birth, mm-hmm. with the car accident. Yes. I'm like, the people who have been in one, yes. get it. Get it. Yes. My, luckily, my boss had been in, in an yes. accident before, yeah. so was very empathetic. Yes. You were very empathetic uh, because been you've in been in that. Yeah. And the people knew the tones, the words not to use. Or, the people who have been in accidents were the, 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 the last thing, one of mm. the last things they said, mm. not the first, mm. Is at least you're alive. It was a mm. what, what? Yes. You know, but people who have never been in an accident, they'll say, <laughs> yo, Bupilo is it. Mm. But people who've been in an accident know, Jorge, the fact that you're alive is the last thing you're thinking about. Mm. It's the trauma. It's, yes. Like, it's not the right thing to yes. say to me at that moment. Yes. At this moment. I, yes. I, as in, they trivialize the whole experience eh, to hey. eh, hey. So, olelang. Yeah. And it's like, there's so many more factors yes. to this whole thing. Yeah. But you find mm. that, and it's so, like, reassuring mm. to be like, I, I even cried when I was speaking to my boss because I felt seen. I was like, I'm mm. worried about like, oh my gosh, I've taken 
so many times so much time off of yes. work yes and my commuting has changed mm. but my boss is like hey i've been in accident before i totally mm. get it it takes forever mm. you know to, yeah so you're absolutely right mm. about that mm. feeling seen feeling seen yeah you know but that's the part where empathy comes and that's the part where like i'm really trying to learn to like stop and deeply imagine that i was in this person's shoes when you are speaking to someone and you say this you feel like you're trivializing it by mm. saying i i can't like i can only imagine yes but s- seriously sometimes i can only imagine yes. what you're going through yeah i yeah. i don't have I don't any know. context i can yeah. so i don't know how to support you but mm-hmm. yeah but then when you speak about this whole empathy thing what comes to my mind is what's been happening not what's been happening really but people speak about this thing yeah i do this a lot and i'm sure you also do this a lot because mm. I think I would assume you'll correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. But I like when someone speaks, I come in with a similar experience. <laughs> Shashkele. I'm like, yo, Lina. Shashkele. And I'm like, oh my gosh, now I've been calling myself out to be like, but I understand, mm-hmm. I'm not taking away from the pain. Mm-hmm. I want them to see they're not alone, mm-hmm. you know? But in that instance, I wonder, do they want to be listened to? Yes. You know, yes. or, or are yeah. you okay? I didn't even know it was the wrong thing to do until I saw it on a post. I think I don't was, think it's the wrong thing to do. It was a TikTok or something that, or it was probably a tweet. I can't remember. It was something that said when somebody tells you this, don't jump in to share how your story is similar. Just listen. Actually, we're talking about the same tweet because I liked the following quote, which said, "But I'm just trying to show you, Hore." I get it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not taking it. Is it difficult? Away. Yeah. It's it, oh guys. It's, I think what's important learning is so difficult. Is, oh, hey, what's important is minimizing your interjection. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, Cuz sometimes somebody really wants you to hear their story to the end. Now all of a sudden it's become your story. Yes. And now we're listening to how traumatic your car accident yes. was in 2020 whatever, you know. You get what I'm saying? Yes. This is, you know, really just yeah yeah being being engaged and listening so so yeah maybe just touch on it i don't know yes. <laughs> touch on it to say i understand but this also happened but just allow for, somebody for the people who think we are not active listeners by mm. always interjecting we mean well <laughs> yeah. we mean well <laughs> for you out there who's always like hey, this one is always chiming in <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other day I, I spoke just before we wrap up, I was speaking to my colleague, um, a very nice lady, and I was like, I just for once want to find out how you're doing because we're always talking about my issues. So I want to find out how are you did that a conversation not very like, go back to my I was about to say I also like have a moment where I realized the other day I met with my friend and she's telling me a big life event. I don't even remember how it ended, how her story ended. I just know that we didn't finish the story. So then I set another date with her. And then when I started the date, I said, I realized you were telling me a story about this and we didn't go into it. Says, we didn't go into it because it's not interesting. I said, no, but I want to hear it. Yes. You tell me every non-interesting part about the story. Can I tell you five minutes later we were talking about yes. something else? And then I said, I was so we did it again. And she said, it's because it's not interesting. I should relax. You're being a good friend. It's fine. I, was, I also called myself out. I'm like, listen. This call was for me to find out about how you're You're doing. (laughs) It's so bad. Especially when you're a talker. Exactly. You just... It's so bad. It's so bad. Anyway, guys, that was today's episode of TCC. If you guys can relate to being friends that just talk and talk and talk and talk the way Bonga and I talk. I appreciate all my friends that just talk over me. I appreciate it so much. (laughs) And so if you like that, drop us a comment. How do you guys manage that? How do you guys deal with it? And then those of you that are more quiet, are you saying we are fine? Or are you saying actually change your habits? Mm. Let us know in the comment section. We love you guys so much. Thank you so much. Always remember to like, share and subscribe. For now though, goodbye and God